Welcome into K State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by a recruiting expert, guru, hard worker, whatever you want to call him, Drew Galloway. As uh, we are here to break down yet another commit for the Wildcats, their esteem picking up for the Wildcats. Everybody can stop fearing. They are going to add more than seven players in this cycle. They are up to nine now. And the latest commit is Boone Morris, who comes on the defensive side of the ball, kind of continues a trend now with uh, also Callan Barta committing. So back-to-back defensive players on uh, consecutive days. And Boone Morris is a guy that was already getting some pretty good comparisons, including to, to one current Wildcat. So I'll just let you, you start from there, Drew. Like, what is the comp and, and what does that mean for what K-State's getting in Boone Morris? Yeah, the, the most common player comp, and I asked it first to uh, some people because I had watched this tape leading up to the visit, and I said, holy crap, this is like Austin Romaine from last year. And if you took away, if you just looked at them and their play style, they're the exact same. And I had multiple people agree with me on that. Um, Boone Morris is like, I want to say top 30 now in the country in tackles, according to Max Preps this season. He's just a really productive football player, super smart. I think he has a 3.9 GPA. And like Callan Barta and rolling early will be big time for him to kind of get the program and get good strength and conditioning. And the most intriguing thing about this offer to me is that he hasn't played linebacker for very long. I think he's only played probably 11, 12 games of linebacker at this point. So he's not a finished product by any means at, at this position. And there's actually a good little story about him uh, moving to linebacker that I'm sure that we'll get into um, later on. But he was he was committed to UTSA. K-State knew about him last year. He actually visited for the Tulane game uh, last season. And then summer goes on and uh, he commits to UTSA. And then K-State shows interest and offers and honestly like all it's another one just kind of like Callan Bardo where he got home from the visit and was ready to commit and it was it was all pretty much wrapped up I mean you could see the potential flip just from watching him on the visit on a Saturday evening I for some reason I almost said morning uh, Saturday you know, evening might have, might have felt like Sunday morning yes <laughs> Uh, because Saturday after or Saturday afternoon evening, he was, uh, you could see him hanging out with a bunch of the current commits that were there and just kind of talking to them and, uh, like just having conversations cause he hadn't met any of them yet. So it felt like it was close to being done. And then, uh, Monday at like eight 30, you got the, the commit tweet coming out and it was, it's another big win for K state. It's another just like with Callan Barta, that's recruiting 101. You find the guy, you get him to visit, you close the deal, and that's that. So, I mean, with Boom Morris, you'll probably look and be like, okay, the guy was committed to UTSA. Uh, the the only other Power 5 offer was Vanderbilt, and he, he's listed as an edge guy in some places, but the comp is the Austin Romain, and the, the linebacker spot is where they're going to play him. So what what is the full story there, and what should people know that, you know, maybe maybe if you've got the cynic or the person that isn't as plugged into recruiting, which admittedly uh, like two years ago would have been me uh, before, you know, this this became my job, and I would have been like, okay, whatever, like this guy, what, what's, what's the deal? So what is the deal here? Explain why this is such a, an impactful and good thing for K-State. Uh, so... I kind of alluded to it earlier that he hasn't been playing linebacker for very long. And one of the reasons that he transitioned to be a linebacker over being an edge rusher defensive end type is on the visit that he took to K-State last season for the Tulane game. uh, The K-State coaches actually told him that they really liked him, but they weren't sure if they were going to be able to offer him as an edge rusher. And they said that if he moved to a linebacker, specifically the Mike linebacker, that they would think about it and kind of evaluate from there. So Morris goes home from his visit uh, last season and about with probably two or three regular season games left in in their season, he makes a switch from edge rusher to linebacker. 
and he was initially supposed to come to a K-State camp uh, this fall or this summer to um, work out in front of the coaches, try and impress them and maybe get an offer then. But schedules just didn't line up and he never uh, took a camp or he never went to a camp. And then you fast forward to this year and K-State likes what they see or likes what they see. And then they ended up offering him based on some of his senior tape. And then they get him to visit. And while he was on the visit, actually, Oklahoma State offered him and he turned them down and said that he wanted to come to K-State. And it kind of goes to show you like where K-State was for him, that he was willing to make the position switch because the K-State coaches kind of alluded to a potential offer if he would have switched. And I mean, it's kind of like the the Austin Romain uh, comparisons just don't stop because Austin Romain was his host of the visit. If you look at their recruiting profiles and how the recruitments kind of played out, they're super similar. Austin Romain actually didn't even have a Power 5 offer. So the fact that Boone Morris has two besides K-State is uh, kind of an advantage in that way, uh, you could say, for K-State beating out two schools. And, and I mean, if you look at his tape and look at his stats, he is a productive football player no matter where he plays. He has, I think, 140 some odd tackles this season already, and he had 148 last season playing head rusher and at the Mike linebacker. So he play, so he just plays really, really hard and has very good uh, football IQ, which is another Austin Romain trait. Well, so I guess that's that's good to, for everybody to know, and and I mean he's just torn it up like you said since the move to linebacker. And uh, that's good for K-State to kind of pick up and, and get another guy there. And, I mean, w- bigger picture here, because this is, you know, the second guy we've talked about with Callum Barta and then Boone Morris about how this is a, a dude that the, the K-State staff found a way to, in a pretty short amount of time, get them to, to flip and be ready to become a Wildcat. So what does that say about how the uh, the recruiting operation is still rolling for K-State even in this 2024 class, that's going to be smaller than most. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that it says a lot about where case eight is because th- this is something that, I mean, yes, they did flip him from a lower level school, but it happened so fast. And it's just something that you haven't really seen from K state, but you're starting to see it more. Like we saw the class last year and this year, Everything just seems to be clicking and everybody's on the right page. And I think a lot of that has to do with staff continuity and they're super familiar with K-8 and how K-8 operates and how they want K-8 to operate. And it kind of goes to show you that the whole, if you can get a kid to campus, you have as good a shot as any, and especially at K-8, that that holds true. I mean, their, their hit rate on official visitors from the, or so far this year, has been pretty incredible. I mean, it's, it's, it's a small class and I think they're at like all seven of the, or eight of the nine commits so far have taken an official visit. And I think they've only missed out on, I want to say two or one player has committed elsewhere, which was Michael Boganowski. Grant Brick still hasn't committed anywhere. Um, oh, I know. So they've missed out on Caleb Red as well. So they've missed out on two players that have taken an official visit. Grant Bricks is still uncommitted. Uh, Jay Sean Ross still uncommitted at the moment. And then Jacquez Bradley Dimps is at the moment still committed to North Texas. But if you look at my latest update on a uh, KSO about his visit, things could change there in a hurry. So to only miss out on two official visits in a small class is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's they they've you know kind of focused and refined things, and the guys that they have missed on. I mean, it, they've been in it till the very end, and unfortunately, you're just in a position where you're going up against teams that that also have some serious pull. And in the case of like Boganowski, like it, that's Oklahoma, and as, as much as it hurts and you lose an in-state kid that close with that kind of talent, it's it's still at the end of the day you should be able to you know with, with your purple glasses on still be able to see why Oklahoma would be the draw that it's been. And so uh, K-State doing what they can to still make this a successful class. And even if 
maybe the the guys at the top right now aren't necessarily there with how you know people thought it might go you are filling it out with dudes that are going to be pretty productive or at least project to be that uh, because you're finding them in the mold of guys that have shown that they can do that immediately uh, once they've gotten to K-State in the past under this staff, with which ultimately is probably the most important thing. I mean, you can get all the talent in the world, but it's got to actually produce. So if you're going to get guys to produce, it doesn't really matter how you get them. Oh, yeah. And I mean, we kind of – hit on it last year around signing day and after signing day and hearing uh, some of the early enrollees speak that K-State has a type and Boone Morris fits the type to a T. He is a football player and isn't afraid to hit you, isn't afraid to come up and make big hits. He He's super smart, super well-spoken. Like He fits what they want to do. And if there was like a as close to like a culture with with a current commit, I think it would probably be Boone Morris, Caden Massey would be up there, Kyle Rockers would be up there. Like they have a type and they're executing at an extremely high clip. We'll just have to see how the rest of the class starts to fill out. But the Wildcats add Boone Morris, the ninth commit, and uh, good projections and, and a good start for them as they start to try and hit this home stretch and wind down as signing day approaches. So that will do it for Drew and I. We will be back with plenty more on K-State Online over the coming days and weeks in terms of recruiting. You can find all the great info that Drew and DY have on that front, as well as all the other information we have on the Wildcats. So if you're not a part of it, go get signed up right now and continue following along on the KSO YouTube page and podcast platforms as well so you can get more of these commitment breakdowns uh, that way because there's going to be more of them that are coming i'm confident in telling you that there will be more of these coming uh very very soon i would imagine so we'll keep an eye on all that keep everybody up to date and uh stay locked in to k-state online